I just wanted to share with you some updates real quickly. Um, my hope is to give you all the information that you need. Um, the goal is to achieve success. Um, again, I always say this, remember, uh, you take a chance at an opportunity and uh, you give it your best shot and hopefully it works out. If it works out, then your life changes, right? Um, if it doesn't uh, work out the way you planned or your or you didn't get to achieve that goal, then you try again, you know, that's always uh, the mindset. All right, so I have my notes here. I wanna talk about this big bird program real quickly. Uh, I was able to gather some information and I thought uh, this is a good time to share this information with you all. All right, uh, one of the things that you guys know about already is the fact that the Speedbird, the Speedbird Pilot Academy is open for application. It opened on the 16th. Some of you have already made it through some of the assessments already and um, I've been getting, you know, just normal feedback on how it's it's been going. Some of you are saying it's hard. Some of you are saying it's easy. You know, it's all mixed. Uh, but one thing I want to say is that, you know, the goal at the end of the day, we learn, we get better and we try again. Right. There's so many opportunities out there nowadays. Um, Speedbed is one of them. But honestly, I love British Airways personally. Um, I remember growing up as a five year old going to the airport in Nigeria and I saw this beautiful 747 air. Uh, uh, Boeing 747 airplane uh, sitting on tarmac with the pilots and I remember asking my mom and I've shared this story before if you guys have been following my channel for a while um, and that was a true story by the way you know, um, I said this as part of my motivation video back you know six seven months ago now um, and then it, uh, it really left an impression on me all right and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to be a pilot so thanks to British Airways for sure but I don't work for British Airways I do not have any affiliates with them. I'm not affiliated in any way. So know that all the information that I'm sharing with you are just from someone that is interested in helping people. And I'm just bringing information to you as much as I can to help. All right. So uh, the first thing I want to say is the assessments are cascading assessment. That's the term they used. But the point here is you have to pass one to be able to move to the other one. I know that a lot of you have been asking questions about how long do you have to wait to hear back? Usually it takes anywhere from 12 to 24 hours from what I've been hearing, the feedback I've been getting. So you have to be, just be patient. I know it's painful to wait, but that's just the process. And I think it's uh, definitely much more manageable for the systems and just the infrastructure behind this whole uh, program because last year they had a lot of glitches and I'm sure they're working to prevent that from happening again. Uh, the, the other thing I want to say is that when you pass the situational judgment test, you move on to the math test, all right? And then you move on to the um, check-in test, all right? And then you have the passenger announcement, okay? Uh, the passenger announcement, uh, the goal is to test how you're able to uh, convey, convey information in a concise way and in an accurate way, okay? Keeping in mind the competences of effective communication and customer service, okay? And some technical, knowledge as well for last year okay for last year there was some question that was that was related to like wh why is it important to de-ice an airplane things like that and those are things that you should know if you're interested in aviation at least we they hope that you know that okay um and i think it's worth researching i don't know if it's going to be the same this year but it's worth researching to make sure that uh you are prepared for that uh the first stage of the assessment or the first stage of the application process you go through all the uh, assessment you go through the application questions you go through your submitting your cv now one of the things i've shared in my videos in the past is that your cv should highlight competences there are six major competences british airways will test for during this whole assessment and then you have other three that will be tested later on uh, but you want to make sure that your cv highlights those competences i've always i've made videos on all of this so please try to just go watch the videos and my recommendation to you is while you're driving while you're doing your laundry while you're eating while you're about to sleep go to the playlist section on my channel find british airways click play all and i bet that you would get nuggets and bits of pieces of information that will help you in this process now why am I confident about this? It's based on your feedback, okay? So that's why I said I bet that it's gonna help you guys because of the feedback I've been given through majority of you that have gone through this in the past and those of you that are going through it currently. So I appreciate all the feedback and I appreciate that you guys are making this a community community that is um, functional and valuable to the people. So I just want to pass that on across. There are two schools that you have to choose from, Skybone and FTE. 
with Skyborn, you would have the, you would start in uh, the UK where you do your ground school for six months and then you move over to Vero Beach in Florida, which is not too far from where I used to live, by the way. So Skyborn is a pretty good school, not advertising for them. And then the second one is FTE, Jerez, and, uh, and that's in Spain, Aretha, all right, Aref, I think that's what it's called. Um, talking about the application, all right, your CV, keep it simple as much as you can. I've always said this in my CV videos, one page, if you are really get just getting started two pages if you are really experienced or maybe you have a bunch of you know work experiences that really highlight your competences find transferable skills find the right terms to be able to connect your background your experiences to aviation to flying to the job okay remember there's no point writing all of this stuff if it doesn't really really show or highlight your competency so i won't really spend too much time on that again if you watch the playlist and just let it play in the background while you're doing other things um, i'm sure it will help you uh, make it easy to navigate okay the cv so make sure that it's easy to kind of go through in a chronological order and most of the time go in a reverse chronological order that's the advice that i've been given in the past and that's what i'm giving as well um, so in the sense start with the most recent experience if you are working or start with the most recent achievements if you're not working if you're volunteering if you are in school whatever just start with the most recent things that you've done and then kind of go in the reverse chronological order um make it easy to go through so don't be too fancy don't add pictures i think i've said this in the past some people still i've seen some that will still add pictures you don't need pictures they don't need to see what you look like at the end of the day your cv speaks for itself Make it legible and make sure it's in PDF format. Next thing, all right, your CV only gets seen when you have completed the online assessment. So you've gone through stage one, uh, the SJT, the maths, check-in, done the video interview. I believe that's when you then get to see, they get to see your CV and then they make their selection of the screening process to kind of, you know, choose those that advance to the next stage of the flight school assessment. Um, Find tangible experiences or examples showcasing your competences. I think I've talked about that. Don't use chat GPT. And by the way, this is in, regarding, in regards to your motivation question. Don't use chat GPT. Make sure you tie it to BA. They've given a lot of uh, information on that, on the um, preparation material that they shared. So I'm not going to go over that. Please go on my videos. You go into the description section. You'll be able to find the links to that. I'll try to link some. I'll try to share some links to, with this one as well, if I don't forget. Um, by the way, I'm not going to edit this video because I just don't have the time to do that. I'm working, trying to get rest and all that, all right? Um, the six pilot competences, professional, sorry, the six pilot competences, professional standards, leadership and teamwork, communication, situation awareness, workload management, problem solving, and decision making. Those six competences should be some, somewhat highlighted on your CV preferably also mentioned in your motivation question. Now, you don't have to mention everything, but the more you are able to showcase or highlight your experiences, your competences, the better you look, all right? That's just how it works. Uh, part of the application screening is to see that you have the competencies you can then transfer to the Speedbird Pilot Academy, all right? That's something I did mention. Um, all right, let's talk about the math section. I've been getting a lot of, the SJT is just SJT. They've given examples on the on the preparation material. So you can go over that yourself to understand, have an idea of what they're looking for. The best thing I can say is, it's all about just using best judgment, all right? Thinking about competencies, thinking about crew resource management, thinking about you know effective communication skills, things of that nature. So I'm not gonna go over that. I've gone over that in my previous video. With the math test, again, I've gone over some tips for that. But like they've always shared, you have the BBC Bite Size uh, uh, website that you can always go to to practice. But again, pass is another one that I've mentioned. And I think I've, uh, the, the link should be in this video as well. You can always check it out. Now know that with pass, you don't get the, there's no way you can get the exact questions, right? The whole goal is to give you an idea of practicing in a timed manner and being able to walk through those questions quickly and accurately. But remember, it is important to be accurate and balance speed, all right? Don't just blow through all the questions and then uh, you have all the time left but you've answered the questions incorrectly. The other thing I want to say is you can skip a question but you can't go back to it. That was mentioned and that's important to know. The next thing I want to say is that uh, so far, about 
14,000 people have applied to the program, at least application, right? Um, last year, about 8,000 people, okay, made it through the assessments, about 8,000 people. So that's, that's, that's a lot, all right? Now remember, the passenger announcement, like I mentioned, after all the assessments, you would have to make sure you demonstrate excellent communication skill, be concise, be informative to the point, okay? Without, uh, without missing the important details, okay? The details, very key, all right? Be confident to the point and what, share what you believe is important. And you, if you were a passenger, what would you like to know if the pilot makes an announcement about, say, a delay? What would that important information you'd like to know? It's, uh, it's important that you think that way when you are sharing this information uh, in the assessment. And it's an audio uh, format this time around. When you make it through all of the selection processes and makes it, you get through all the BA uh, testing and all, uh, the, pre the training is going to be 18 months, all right? The first six months will be ground school and then the rest of it will be then the actual flying, all right? I'm taking the exams and all that. Motivation is key, all right? Demonstrate people's skills all through this process, especially during the face-to-face -face one. Be an upbeat, positive person during this interview process, especially if you make it through the flight school interviews and the BA interviews. And of course, do your research. Hey, I think I've mentioned this in my previous video. Go on British Airways website, spend some time on the BA Better World, know the terms that BA likes to use, okay? Sustainability, their goals, their mission, their values, the things that they're doing for the environment, the ways they are improving the environment, the things they're doing to improve the lives of people around the world. Those are things that you can always use, okay? Um, when you're done and you finish training, you'll be bonded for six years, okay? And you would be paid 34,000 um, pounds. The cost of the training would be rounded to about 94,000 pounds. You'll be bonded for six years and the, every month accrued as, an, as, a, as a pilot for British Airways, uh, there's some numbers that is deducted from the balance. So that means if you leave British Airways prior to your six year mark, you would be responsible to pay the rest of the balance. Okay, so that's something that was mentioned. If you don't have any flying experience, that's fine. But if you do have flying experience, it helps. That's something that is, I mean, I think I've mentioned this in my previous videos as well. I always tell you guys, fly, find volunteering activities, find opportunities that are around you, okay? Go to flight schools around you to talk to them and ask them what are the opportunities that they have that you could benefit from. Now, they mentioned subsistence allowance, okay? And if you're with FTE, you get 50 pounds per week, all right? There's no salary while you're in training, but there's the subsistence allowance and or accommodation provided for those uh, I think with Skybond, uh, but you get 50 pounds per week with FTE, you get 100 pounds if you're in the UK with Skybond and 130 pounds in the US uh, with Skybond, all right, once you move to the US stage. You can't work during training and this is something a lot of you have concerns about, like working during training to make extra money, to pay the bills, right, uh, but you can't work during training, you have to strictly focus on tr your schooling, all right, training and doing this around the clock so that you can get it done and join British Airways. Like I said, you get that 4,000 pounds when you start. Now, there was something that was mentioned. As a pilot, generally you get what we call per diem in the US, by the way. Uh, I don't know about British Airways, but I, I think it kind of applies as well in which you can make extra money. And uh, the number they, was, they gave was, in a, any you would make anywhere from 44,000 to 47,000 pounds as uh, uh, when you first start up, depending on how you work, depending on the kind of schedules you get. And I think it's worth mentioning. This will continue and it will slowly increase over the years, but eventually when you get to your pay point seven or your year seven mark, all right, your pay becomes equivalent to what other people are getting depending on your experience or background. So if you have, uh, if you came through this self-sponsored route, you would end up becoming an equal, you'd be on equal pay scale when you get to your year seven mark, whether you're from the cadet background, a self-sponsored uh, background, or you came from another airline, all right? Fun fact, there was an 18-year-old that made it through the program last year. One one person that was 18-year-old. Now, that's not to discourage those of you that are 18 year old. That's just to let you know that it is possible without any background uh, in aviation or any background in uh, having professional experience like work experience that's really all of it i don't want to make this video too long i just hope that you guys have found value in this one i wanted to share that with you i want to encourage you as well that hey do your best 
practice, practice, practice. One thing I want to say also is that know that the math section, if you have not been working with maths recently, like practicing numbers and all that, you know, knowing how to calculate speed, time and distance, knowing how to calculate, you know, just working with numbers, you know, quick estimates of numbers would help as well. If you have not been doing that, it may struggle, especially with the time factor being involved, all right? They are not difficult maths, but it's just that with the time pressure, it makes it very, very tight. So um, I wish you guys the best of luck. I don't know when this application will close, but keep an eye on that one. And I'll see you in the next one. Please don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to leave a comment. Don't forget to give me a feedback. And I'll see you in the next one.